I'm joined here today by the man himself, Saeed Awad, set to take on Mendel Nalo at Bellator 249. What's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing well, man. Thank you for asking. Uh, I assume you must do uh, pretty well there out in uh, sunny California. Like, I assume the weather's got to be still nice, even though we're in October. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's actually hot today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, 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 it's usually nice year around over here. Yeah, it's nice to hear because I'm in uh, I'm in North Carolina right now, so we're in the South, and you know it's it's already cold. Like it's it's disappointing when you see those guys in California enjoying the sun and everything. Oh man, yeah, don't remind me, man. I'm moving to Texas uh, at the end of the year, but um, for the weather, there's not that bad. Oh wow, Texas. Uh, what's the reason behind the move to Texas? What was that? What's the reason behind the move to Texas? Uh, my, my kids are gonna start. My daughter's about to start uh, kindergarten, in, and we wanted to be um, we wanted to be settled and. Uh, and I just wanted to change. Me and my wife, we talked about it. We wanted to change from California. And uh, just all around, you know, cost of living is cheaper. I think uh, the schooling's a little better, you know. And uh, it's a few things that we, we kind of picked out that we liked, so. Wow, that's an interesting move. I think you're the, the second notable Californian to move there, right, with the original being uh, Joe Rogan, where he moved his podcast. Uh, how, how did Texas kind of get on your radar? Oh, that's right. Um, you know what? My wife was... Uh, she was looking at places uh, outside of California, and uh, she looked at, like, Utah, and she looked at Idaho, and I was like, oh, I don't know what those <laughs> states was are, you know, you know, and she was like, what about Texas? And I was like, oh, I was like, we check it out, you know, and uh, I was like, first I got to, you know, make sure I like the gym over there, and I knew about a, a gym in Dallas, um, uh, Fortis MMA, right. so I uh, reached out to him, he was like, come by, and uh, we clicked, so I was like, okay, you know, you have to have a, a good home base if you're going to train somewhere, you know? So we clicked, and uh, yeah, I went from there. Oh, wow. So you're going to be training officially with the, the team over at Fortis? Yeah. Yep. Wow, that, that's exciting. Like, they're one of the one of the hottest gyms right now, and that's going to give you a, a bunch of different training partners, too. Yeah, yeah. They have some solid guys there, man. Uh, the coach is really good. So I'm just looking forward to it, you know. I'm going to, you know, definitely miss California. miss my uh, coaches here, you know. You know, I'm, I'm not moving because of the coaches or anything. I'm, you know, I'm moving because of my daughter and my kids, you uh, but well, that's the main reason. So, but you know, luckily we found him, and uh, he's right there in Dallas. So, you know, we're moving right at like 20 minutes from him, so it should be perfect. Well, it's a, definitely a good move. Uh, I'm kind of curious though. When you told your team in California about this move, obviously it had nothing to do with them. But what's kind of their reaction? Like, we know sometimes gyms don't take it well. Sometimes guys understand. What was kind of their reaction? No, my my main head coach Romy, uh, he's he's real uh, real understandable, and he was like, "Oh, that's awesome, man. He's like, good for you. You know, I'm, I'm happy for you." And uh, you know, go do your thing, you know, and it's, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you make decisions to, to better yourself. And if, if people are salty on that decision, then they weren't, they weren't around you to better you in the first place. Right. So that lets you know that you're surrounded by the right people that, that they care about you first and foremost. Exactly. Exactly. So it's great to hear, man. Listen, uh, we haven't seen you. It's going to be almost exactly a year since the last time you fought. What's been going on during that year? Like what's kind of been stopping you, obviously with COVID and everything, it's complicated, but what's been stopping you from coming back? Um, well, you know, COVID hit right away. I was supposed to actually fight last May. Uh, you know, I wanted to fight right away, but because I had fought back to back there, they were kind of waiting a little bit. And then, uh, finally, uh, they had offered me an opponent for May and I was like, Oh, perfect. And I was like, let's do it. And then literally, I think it was like a week later, uh, COVID hit and started closing all the shows and, and my fight got canceled. And, uh, so I just continued training because the gym was still open to train. And I just continued training, and then finally they started having shows again, and they booked me again. And then I had to pull out, had an injury, like a eye injury. So then I had to pull out, and then I, I got good like three weeks later, so they re, they rebooked me again. And so uh, this opponent, Mandel Nalo, what was kind of a reaction when they came to you and told you, like, you know, this was going to be your next opponent? Uh, I, was, I, was, I was with it, man. Uh, he was uh, one of the prospects that they kind of signed, and uh, I know he likes to stand. You know, I've seen him fight, you know, once. And, um, you know, I went back and watched some video after they told me. And uh, he's more of a he's more, he's more of a strike. So I thought, you know, stylistically, that's why they put it together. So I thought it would be perfect. And so how do you like this matchup? I assume you must like it, right, being a striker with big power, knowing that you're going to face another striker. Like, you, you must know it's going to be an exciting one. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I know for sure they uh, they put the fans' hat on when they made this fight. And uh, and they knew it would make sense for both of us. You know, we, you know we're both going to go out there and put on a good show. And... Uh, I was excited, man. You know, I, I really was when they when they gave me his name. All this is perfect. You know, perfect fight for me. Perfect fight for him. He's an upcomer. I'm a more veteran, and uh, we both like to stand. And uh, yeah, 
So I think it's going to be a good fight. And so for a veteran like yourself, when they give you a prospect like him, how do you take something like that? Because we know some guys, they don't like it because they feel like they're being ushered in a role they don't want to be. How do you take it when you find out like a, a prospect is going to be your next fight? It depends what position you're in. You know what I mean? Like uh, last year, you know, when I was on a four-fight winning streak, and then I, uh, had they tried to offer me him, I would have said no. I'm like, why? You know what I mean? I'm, I'm trying to fight for the title. My next fight should be a title fight, if not somebody who's right there. And, you know, I lost a couple of my last fights, so I'm, I'm in no position to, to sit here and try to pick my opponents. You know, and then, and then this guy, they, uh, they, he's already had a couple of fights in Bellator. It would be different if it was, you know, they just called him right now, and, you know, his first fight in Bellator, and, uh, and they asked me, then it would have been more of, like, uh, it's more of a disrespect thing, you know what I mean? Because I've been around so long, and this dude's his first fight here. Right. So, uh, but he's had a couple of fights, you know, and I, I know he's one of the dudes that they, uh, that they signed out as a prospect and um, you know, and I'm not really in a position to be picking the fight. So I just know it's going to be an exciting fight. And I just got to go out there and uh, prove, you know, who I am or prove why, why I'm in the position I've always been in and, and uh, show them that I'm here to stay. And so you did mention your last couple of fights a little bit. Things haven't been quite going your way. When you look back on that period, what, what do you, what can you kind of pinpoint it to? Like, what do you think was kind of uh, going on during that sort of streak? Honestly, man, uh, I think bad luck, if anything, you know, um, I mean, uh, one of the fights I thought I won. Another fight, you know what I mean? The dude basically cheated the whole fight. And then uh, another fight, like, I got caught fast. And that was just, I, I know I know the mistakes I made, you know, during that fight. Just, I made, I made a mistake and I, I paid for it with loss. And then I took a fight, you know, on a five day notice, you know, five pounds above a weight class above me. Yeah. You know, and so it was like tailor made for me to lose. And sure enough, I, I lost. And, you know, you learn from it. You know, I shouldn't be taking fights like that in five day notice. You know, regardless, out of my weight class with five extra pounds on top of it. You know what I mean? So, um, so you know, it's just, it's just learning. You just learn from it. And uh, I think, uh, you know, a lot of those fights I should have won. You know, and um, and you know, just got to come back and fight the way I know how to fight. So speaking of that last fight, I mean, uh, is is that kind of a situation you regret? Like, obviously, when you have a big name like Paul Daly is sort of, you know, you're tempted to take it. But when you look back on it, do you think you would have done things differently looking back now? Um, I, I, I try not to regret anything I do. You know what I mean, I usually, if I made the decision at the time I made it, I made it for a reason. So uh, I, I never want to look back and, and regret and be like, oh, man, I should have to take that. No, I, I know I took it. I took it out there and see how I could do against somebody like Paul Daly, no matter what the weight class is. And, um, I mean, I say, you know, I'll sit here and say that I could do things different and maybe I shouldn't take him, blah, blah, blah. But I'm pretty sure if the, you know, the situation presented itself again, I'll probably do it again. <laughs> you know what I mean? And because uh, I don't want to be that guy that, you know, retires and doesn't have those big fights or never fought those guys and always think like, man, I wonder how would I did how I fought that guy or how would I did how I fought that guy. I mean, they asked me to fight Cyborg. I think it was on like a two week notice, you know, years back. And I took that fight and I won. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a big name being as a weight class above me. And um, had I not took that fight, I'd never had that one under my belt either. You know, so, uh, you know, one, one, lost one. It, it, it's part of the game. And uh, it makes me for who I am. You know, I don't want to shy away from fights, let alone, you know, fights like that. That could be super exciting for the fans, super exciting for myself. And, you know, leave a, a stamp in my career. Right, and it's, it's a tricky situation too, right? Because it's short notice, but at the same time with the short notices, usually the opponent's bigger and things like that. And if you win... The payout is huge, so that must make it, you know, that much tougher at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially uh, going up weight class, I had just fought, and so my weight was already super light. I think Wayne's day, I was waking up 168, and it, it weren't even fighting at 70. We're fighting at yeah. 75, which uh, I didn't know that until after I agreed. You know what I mean? Which, which I mean, I still would have probably took it. But if anything, I would have asked to make it at 70, not 75. And, um, you know, it, it is what it is. But, yeah, yeah it's, it's, all, it's all part of the game. You know, I, I knew what I signed up for. And so uh, I'm sure for this fight, you're training out of the uh, out of the famed garage, right, where they're pushing all the fighters. Everyone's going to their limit. Uh, how's that been going for this camp? Uh, great, man. Uh, Coach Cal is um, something special. You know what I mean? He, he trains us through science. You know, he, everything's on point with him. He'll tell you what you're going to weigh the week of your fight down to, like, 0.2 of a pound. You know, he's usually dead on, but sometimes point two it might be off. But that's, you know, he'll tell you how many calories to eat three weeks, you know, out. He'll tell you, you know, if he needs to make an adjustment, tell you how much more you need to run. And he obviously writes all the workouts there. So, um, you know, there's no shortcuts there. You know, you you, you can't, uh, like, you can't fool yourself when uh, when you're going and training, you know, like that with your strength and conditioning and your, you know, 
your uh, nutrition and everything. And I'm doing my 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 full camp with my my old coach back at Millennia with uh, Romy and Georgie and all the guys and Lorenz and I'm over there. So it's been good, man. It's been really good. I, I feel really focused. I feel like things are actually in place and uh, I'm not really bouncing around like last year. Yeah, training lab we had moved from one gym to another gym and then we kind of were doing our camp somewhere else because the gym wasn't up yet so like a lot of the warning place too but now i have a uh, like my head coach back with me he knows me best he knows uh you know good things i knew i do he knows my my bad habits and he, we've been working a lot on certain things and uh, uh it's awesome it's awesome to have that and have the garage uh conditioning behind me and so have you uh, done things differently this training camp obviously you mentioned a little bit with your coaches and everything but compared to these last couple of fights like were there adjustments that you were forced to make as a result uh i'll say yeah man to be honest like um i've stepped out from my old gym because i wanted to um, work with coach cal and then uh I, I got to work with him i got my i got stronger i got my cardio up i i, I exceeded in a lot of areas but i also didn't have my my, my home gym you know what i mean not home gym home coach so I didn't really have that corner that, you know, that, 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 that voice you're used to where they know every move you make. You know, I think Georgie cornered me in my last couple of fights. Georgie and uh, one of like my teammates had one. He cornered me, which they, they're awesome. You know, they know everything about it. But it's different when you have your coach there versus a, a teammate there because they they're also in their camps as well. So they can't, you know, be full on like a, like a would be, you know, until they retire and then they decide to take up that, that role as a coach. So having my coach there and having him, you know, working with me the, the past, you know, you know, however many months we've been working, eight months, seven months, whatever, since COVID or before COVID, it's it, it's cool, man, because, you know, I've been working with them for the past, shit, like eight years or something, you know, since almost I started my career, and now I'm back with them, and uh, and I got kind of the both worlds with Coach Cal and then with my, my coach. And so uh, something that I'm curious about, uh, recently over the pandemic, everyone's bidging the TV series, a lot of people, they watch the show Kingdom which uh, we saw a lot of California fighters participate, right? Like Georgie, Juan Archuleta, guys like that. I feel like we didn't see you on that show. Would there have been a possibility we could have seen you on there? Uh, there would have been. There would have been. Actually, uh, uh, Joe Stevenson actually had called me when they, like right before they started filming. He'd say, hey, listen, start filming the show because he's the one that kind of put the cast together for the fighters. And he was like, uh, I might use you as one of the guys and da 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 He was like, how much do you weigh? And at the time, I think I was like 185. And he's like, dude, you gotta be walk, waking up like 165. He's like, because these guys that are you're gonna fight against are lighter guys. It's not gonna look mm -hmm. right, you know, if you're too big. And I was like, oh, all right, I'll, I'll let you know. You know, I didn't think anything of yeah. it. You know what I mean? And then, uh, and then I think we had a conversation after that. He's like, hey, what's your weight? And I was like, oh, it's heavy, you know. And he was like, oh, okay, like yeah. He's like, I kind of got the guys picked out, but if you know, for the next season, you know, what I mean, maybe maybe we'll make it work something. And then uh, I was like, oh, okay. And then I, I went down. I hung out. I, I, I was like an extra. For a couple of days when georgia was filming and uh, uh it was nothing, nothing really big but um but yeah that's cool you know who knows maybe maybe next time. for sure it's a cool opportunity i mean we saw some guys like Juan archuleta i think he was there like all three seasons but i don't think he got to speak once he was just like <laughs> kind of there in the background but we saw him like uh it, it's weird uh, the certain roles that some guys got yeah like like i said uh joe had a, joe Stevenson had a big part in it you know and he uh he was kind of like the mma connect when it came to that show so he's the one i kind of picked who 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 he thought would work and he I think he wrote like a lot of the fight scene there too and the choreography and all that good stuff so um you know he's he's he, it comes to MMA he knows everything from 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 start to finish from the weight cut to the to everything you know from the jiu jitsu strike everything man so he's a perfect dude to have you know in that in that corner for for, the, for that cast, so, yeah. And as we're talking about it, I assume you've seen it, but for you as a fighter, when you watch some of these fight scenes, some of the stuff that's going on, did it seem accurate to you? Like, were there things that were a little bit corny or were we watching it? Like, you know, these guys really knew their stuff, obviously, with Joe being a part of that show. I mean, I think I think for, like, an outsider, it depends how you look at it. If you're not crazy about, like, fighting or whatever, it's either going to seem super corny to you or it's going to seem like, hey, man, it's real shit that happens behind the scenes. You know what I mean? I know, I know all cast all had different things going on, and uh, it's stuff that really happens, you know what I mean? And, and whether you think it's corny or not, or it's a little bit to the extreme, it's it's stuff that really happens and goes down in MMA that's, you know, like, like that. They wrote it pretty good. I think the, the biggest thing that surprised me was the was the weight cutting. Like, I think usually in these kind of movies, they pretend like everybody just walks around at the right weight class. But seeing them mm -hmm. legitimately cutting weight and stuff like that, like, it seemed pretty accurate, at least from, you know, where I, where I was watching. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think that Joe probably had a big part in that to explain it. Listen, this is... The stuff that we go through that people don't see, so they probably added a lot of that stuff. I'm assuming because of him, because how else would they know how how intense some of that stuff is? 
But uh, you did mention your weight that it wouldn't look right. I think at one point, though, didn't they have like Joseph Benavidez fighting at, I guess, 155 against one of the much bigger actors? Like, it, it's interesting how, you know, the fighters, I guess, because they're more muscular, they had to sort of, you know, move up or move down a weight class in this case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure it was his natural weight, you know, I mean, fighting at that weight, which, you know, on TV, like us knowing that, and you're like, oh, that dude's yeah. tiny. But on TV, they, they use their angles and it, 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 they'll make it look a little bit better, you know? For sure. Uh, one last question before you get back to your fight. Kind of an easy one. You're going to hear it a million times, especially if you go through media days. But how do you see yourself getting your hand raised in this one? You know, I train hard, man. I train hard. And uh, I know I could always be like, I could always be one punch away from winning. But um, that's not what I train for. I train to go all three rounds. And uh, if it's up to me, you know, I'll, I'll win by knockout and just, uh, you know, walk away without having any bumps or bruises. But, uh, but, you know, I'm kind of a tough guy. Um, you know, he's he doesn't really have a loss. His loss is like a freak accident. And he, you know, he obviously is a striker, so he can hit hard. I'm sure plenty of times in the gym, he trains with good guys. So I don't see me putting him away that easy. But, you know, if it happens, I'll take it. If not, you know, it's going to be a three-round war. All right, well, there we go. Uh, we look forward to it. It's going to be a great fight. Thank you so much for the time, man. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you.